Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that Lord has made. We have celebrated. We have told God how awesome he is. We can't get enough of talking about how awesome the God that we serve is. He's a mighty God. He's a good God. He's a great God. When you start saying that, it, it, something bubbles up inside of you. It makes you want to smile. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Our message today is keep your faith burning. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. Keep your faith burning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We just praise you. We exalt you and magnify your glorious name. You are a good God. You are a mighty God. And there is none like you above the heavens nor beneath the earth. We have come, O oh God, to celebrate you. We have come, O oh God, to hear your word, O oh God. As we open up our hearts and our open up our ears, O oh God, we pray right now that you will give us wisdom, knowledge, and revelation that we can apply this word to our lives, oh God. And we ask you right now, Lord, uh, uh, God, to do it uh, for your glory because we don't want to just be hearers of this word, uh, but we want to be doers of the word, oh God. Uh, and we pray right now, Lord God, uh, that you will make that happen uh, for us, oh God. Use your servant for your glory and let your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. We all know that fire is hard to contain. Ask any firefighter who has been on duty for years about what it takes to control a wildfire. According to Wikipedia, a wildfire is an unplanned, uncontrolled, and unpredictable fire. Help us, Jesus. Then there is the term to spread like wildfire, which implies to spread, to circulate, to propagate, uh, propagate very quickly, and widely. For example, COVID-19 spread like wildfire to many cities and towns and nations. Uh, help us, Jesus. Uh, unlike the wildfire, when it comes to faith, there must be a plan. The Holy Spirit must be in control. And there is a predictable outcome. The predictable outcome is that we get to go to heaven. Our faith opens up that door for us. Some wildfires are very hard to put out. They will continue to burn for years and years and years. Help us, Lord. The only aspect of a wildfire that we can apply to our faith is the continuous burning. God wants your faith to continue to burn, continue to grow and grow and grow. Oh, glory to God. This brings us to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, which warns us not to lose faith or shipwreck it, because sometimes we can run ourselves into a shipwreck. Oh, help us, Jesus. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, amongst whom are Harmonious and Alexander whom I have handed over to Satan that they may learn to not to blaspheme. Timothy is receiving great advice from the Apostle Paul, which can apply to all of us today. We live around a lot of influences that can alter 
our faith from time to time. Influences of the world, influences from others, all of these influences can alter our faith or can hinder our faith in ways that God does not want it to be hindered. It can try to extinguish our faith just like those firefighters extinguishes the wildfire. Paul gives us these two brothers, Hermanius, Hermanius and Alexander, whose faith was damaged by what they had spoken. Most likely, they were influenced by those who do not serve God. We have to be careful not to allow unbelievers and even some so-called believers to stop our faith from burning. Help us, Jesus. You have to consider the advice that the Apostle Paul gave young Timothy. To keep your faith burning, you must believe in who you are in God. Oh, glory to God. God has a prophecy for each of our lives. He has spoken a word over each of our lives. And we have to believe in that word and believe that that's who God has called us to be. To keep your faith burning, you must fight to maintain your faith. You got to fight for it. There's a war going on for your faith and you got to be in the fight to maintain it. Have a good to keep your faith burning. You must have a good godly conscience, a moral conscience, which those not following Christ seem to lack these days. But you don't want to lack a good conscience. You want to have a good conscience and a godly conscience at that. There are so many vices that can make us forget who we are in God and what it means to have faith in what God has spoken about us. Oh, glory to God. And those moments of weakness reflect on what God has done for you, it, that it is greater than what the works of the enemy can try to hinder you how the works of the enemy can try to hinder you. Keep in mind what we believe helps to shape who we become. I want to say that again. What you believe help you to shape who you become. Believe in who you are in God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Just this past week, I was speaking with my godson about the role of a teacher in helping a student learn what he or she is teaching. I instilled in him a belief that an army sergeant once told me. He said, if you don't grasp the work from your professor, it is not that you can't learn. But the teacher or the professor does not know how to communicate that work in a way that you can comprehend. Help us, help us, help us, Jesus. Uh, that sergeant's words uh, helped me through my college years and as a teacher of God's word. Because even Jesus said to the people that he spoke to them in, the, in, in parables because he needed them to understand. So anyway, Jesus was speaking to them in stories so that they can understand. We'd have to have understanding. The sergeant's words became something I believed and also encouraged me over the years. Likewise, this is what the Apostle Paul was doing to Timothy. Oh, hallelujah. We, when your faith is being tested, you must trust your belief and who God says you are. Timothy was given a word about who God called him to be. This I charge, I entrust. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Oh, help us, Lord. The apostle is reminding him that who God called him to be is greater than what the world can offer him. That's what the apostle is reminding him. And God is reminding us of that today as well. The word of God wants 
us to know that we should believe what God calls us to believe and who we ought to be. I want to say that again. Know that who God, who we believe God, we have to know who we believe God calls us to be is who we ought to be. Oh, glory to God. He has called you to be a son or a daughter. He has called you to be a child of God. He has called you to be an heir of the kingdom. To be an heir is greater than any title you can receive in this world. Galatians chapter 4 and 6, verses 6 to 7 state, And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, an ear through God. Oh, glory to God. That's including us daughters. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. We are not forgotten because it said son. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The more you believe in God's word for your life, the more your faith will keep burning. Oh, hallelujah. Like Jesus said, don't hide your light under a basket. Instead, put it on a stand and let it shine for all. Matthew chapter 5, verses 15. Believing in who you are in God keep, helps to keep your faith burning and gives you a reason to fight to keep the flame lit. Oh, glory to God. We got to keep our flames lit, especially in this time that we're going through. You got to keep that flame lit and burning for the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Fight to maintain your faith. Obstacles. We know life is about overcoming them. In order to overcome them, we just cannot sit around and do nothing. Doing nothing achieves nothing. Life is about pushing or fighting to obtain and to maintain what we have or desire. Now, when the apostle advised Timothy to wage a warfare, he was not instructing him to physically fight someone or go around picking arguments. Help us, Jesus. Instead, he was talking about a spiritual warfare, a spiritual fight. We can assume that Hermanius, Hermanius and Alexandra did not fight for their faith, but gave in to seducing thought or seducing spirit. Let's look again at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. Holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith. Among you are Hermanius and Alexandra, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. As believers, we must wage war against the vices that tries to extinguish our faith. The enemy knows that our faith in the Lord gives us the ability to be overcomers and to achieve more. We want to be overcomers and we want to achieve more. So we cannot allow the enemy to extinguish our faith. The warfare we are fighting is described in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 to 5. For the weapons of your warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. These passages clearly state that our good fight, O oh glory to God, takes place in the spirit. It is good for people to protest against injustice, but they must not fail to pray 
and wage war in the spirit as well. We cannot downplay the power of divine intervention. Oh, hallelujah. Divine intervention. The Apostle Paul summarized what is meant by waging a good warfare by holding on to the faith in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil, of the, the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Every day, you should ask God to put his armor upon you. When you pray, when you get up in the morning, ask God, to place his armor on you as you go out for the day. A soldier does not go to war without his armor and the right equipment for the battle. Our equipment for our battle is prayer and the word of God. I want you to know that and keep that in mind always. The equipment for your battle is prayer and the word of God. Don't let the vices of this world shipwreck your faith. Fight to keep afloat. Maintain your faith. Maintain your faith. Oh, glory to God. By setting a goal every day. That you must set a goal every day. To maintain your faith. As well as having a good Godly conscience. Oh, glory to God. Have a good godly conscience. What does conscience mean? Conscience refers to a state of awareness or a sense that one's actions or intentions are either morally right or wrong, along with a feeling of obligation to do the right thing according to Webster Dictionary. Your conscience interacts with your soul with the intent to distinguish right from wrong and prompt you to choose right and avoid wrong. I want you to get that. That our, our, our conscience helps us to distinguish right from wrong and it should, if you're in God or if you have a godly conscience, it should always Direct you to do what is right. Oh, glory to God. Verses 19 in our passage indicates that Hermanius and Alexander were victims of a bad conscience. A bad conscience. They did not think before speaking, which caused them to be blasphemous. Holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith. That is right. To blaspheme means to curse, to rail at, to rival, slander, or to speak of as evil. In other words, these two men did not have a good godly conscience, even though they were supposed to be a part of his disciples. The, the, the later disciples, the ones that Paul and, 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 and Silas and those went out and evangelized and they became disciples to spread the word as well. Know that the Spirit of God will always lead us to do what is right, first in our minds and then in our hearts. As we can see morality, which is associated with doing right, it's on the decline in our nation and around the world. You can tell by the things people are doing to harm and to disgrace others. In Thailand, just this past week, someone shot up a daycare center with kids in it. Little kids, a daycare center. Help us, Jesus. In this nation, 
We have experienced an uptick in school shooting. Why is they always trying to take out the babies? Help us, Lord. A person with a good conscience would not handle things that way. If you're disgruntled, you don't have to kill people's children. Help us, Lord. Those examples are extreme, but lying and slandering someone is as bad. First Peter chapter 3, verses 16 to 7, links a good conscience uh, and good behavior together. It makes a link between a good conscience and good behavior. Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who rival your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be God's will than for doing evil. And we know that it is God's will for us to do what is good. Those who are living by faith is required to have a good conscience. Those who are living by faith is required to have a godly conscience, which indicates doing things the way God will require. This is why we are to let the mind that was also in Christ Jesus be in us, according to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5. Jesus thoughts were of good and not evil. And he wants your thoughts uh, to be of good and not evil. We got to think like Jesus thought. Uh, we are Yabashata. Uh, we got to do it uh, in his name. Uh, in closing, uh, you must uh, stay ready by keeping the flame of your faith burning. Uh, we do not know the hour or the moment that Christ will come. Uh, your faith is your key uh, to your greater inheritance. Uh, the one that God has ordained for eternity. I want that inheritance. You should want that inheritance as well. So heed the advice given to our brother Timothy. Keep your faith burning by believing in who you are in God. Keep your faith burning. Fight to maintain your faith. Keep your faith burning. Have a good godly conscience. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. This is one battle that you must fight to stay in and get ahead. Oh, glory to God. Remember, the Lord is on your side. He said he will not leave you or forsake you. So don't give up or don't give in. The God we serve is on your side. Oh, glory to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercies, your loving kindness, your compassion. We ask you right now, oh God, to help us to keep our flame burning, to keep our faith burning for you. No matter what is going on or taking place in this world, that our faith will not be extinguished by the devices of the enemy. God, that our faith will not be extinguished by the influences of this world. God, help us, oh God, to know that we have to stay lit for you. Help us to know that we have to fight the good fight to keep our faith. Help us to know that our conscience must be severed of all the things of the world and be godly. Help us to know who we are in you. For who we are in you is greater than what the world can make us. So we ask, oh God, every day to help us to put on your armor as well. As we press forward and not allow the enemy to extinguish our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't want to believe that everyone has a relationship with Christ, but we want you to come into that relationship. The re best relationship that you can have in your life is a relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. And so we want you to recognize that Jesus died for you. He was bruised, battered for you so that you can have eternal life. So we want you to consider giving your life to this awesome God that 
We serve this awesome Lord that did an awesome act so that we can have life and life more eternally. And if you're willing to consider that today, we first have to, you first have to admit that you are a sinner, that you've done things wrong in the sight of God, and that you need forgiveness because Jesus came so that we can be forgiven. Then you must believe in your heart that you are forgiven because of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You are forgiven, not because of yourself or me or whatever we say, but we're forgiven because of Jesus. Then you have to confess with your mouth. If you believe something, you don't have no problem letting someone know. Oh, hallelujah. And so we want you to let someone know uh, that you believe in Jesus uh, and that you want a relationship with him. And how do we do that here? We make a confession. And this confession is in a form of a prayer. So let us pray together. Bow your head and say this after me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Take away my sin. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you said that prayer, welcome to the family. Angels in heaven are rejoicing, and so are we here at One Worship Place. If you said that prayer, we want you to call us and let us know that you said that prayer and so we can pray for you and continue to encourage you uh, to grow in your faith. Amen. And if you don't want to call us, uh, email us uh, and let us know your name uh, so that we can put you on our prayer list. Uh, God bless you. God love you. And we here too at One Worship Place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our church family here at One Worship Place would appreciate your support in many ways that you can give uh, through the Giftify app, Cash app, by mail, or, or on our website. God bless.